Page 15, Classical Dance. Very famous melody by Beethoven. On page 14, they're introducing a real mess. Well, let's go through it. I don't agree with this way they're presenting this, but the book is doing it this way, so I'm going to cover it. Okay. I think there's a much easier way. However, they're doing penis scales, five finger positions. Here, we've had C, we've had G is one sharp, and we have F, which is one flat, B flat. Got more of them. The D, and if you follow the five finger or that whole step, half step pattern, you get it. Let's go to C major. Remember, it's a whole, whole, half, whole. That's the pattern. So that's the pattern we're going to use. And a D, if I start there, it's a whole, whole, half, whole. You get a half sharp in the middle of it. Right here. Well, the Chord's going to be the same. The 1, 4, and the 5, 7 chord. And you could go through the whole process of figuring out what the chord is, but they're all the primary chords, are, the patterns work the same way. Then they go to A major. Now, D major, the key of D major, has two sharps, an F sharp and a C sharp. But rather than giving you the key signature, the two sharps at the beginning of the staff, they're using accidentals. Well, in this penis scale, we don't use the C sharp. We only have the F sharp. But if you go to the 5 7 chord, then you get the C sharp. So, anyway, that's D major. Then they go to A major. Well, let's follow our pattern whole, whole, half, whole. Is that it? Whole, whole, half, whole. It's like, it's like at D major, it's got one the sharp in the middle, here. That's A major. A major has three sharps in the key signature. The F sharp, the C sharp, like D major has, plus a G sharp. Well, in this pattern, all you're getting is the C, C sharp. There's no F sharp unless you go to the four chord, and that's here. Now you got an F sharp. If you go to the five seven chord, you get the G sharp. So they're there, they're not giving you all the chords, they're only giving you this chord, the one chord. I'm giving you all the primary chords. That's A major, or the key of A. And then E, well, let's just have a fall, the ball here in E major. Follow the pattern, starting on E. You know, whole, whole, half, whole. Whole, whole, half, whole. So these two black keys. E major. E major has four sharps. F sharp is always the first one in its key signature. C sharp is always the second. G sharp is always the third. And now D sharp is always the fourth. So you got four sharps to deal with when playing in the key of E major. You think, good lord, how can I do all that? Actually, it falls under the fingers very nicely. I like E major to play it because it's, it's comfortable. But you have the one chord. And then the four chord, it's got a C sharp in it. And then the five seven chord, it's got a D sharp in it. So we got all the primary chords, we got them all there, okay. I, I, as I said, I think there's an easier way to get this. So don't worry about this too much. Just understand that when we get into these keys, because they won't give you a key signature, you're gonna have more accidentals to deal with. In classical dance, let's look at this. This happens to be in the key of D major. And you may wonder, well, how do I know what key it's in? Because there's no key signature given. There's nothing. Generally, you look at the key signature, but that alone doesn't tell you everything. What I do is I look at the end. Most of the time, not always, most of the time, a piece will end on its one chord, or its tonic chord. Well, if you look at the bottom, we have here. Those are the notes in the D major chord. I mean, it, it's not in root position. I have to put the D on the bottom here. It doesn't matter what the arrangement of the notes are. The point is, those are the notes. It's a D major chord. I figure this is in D major. So I look around. I expect to see all the Fs to be sharp and all the Cs to be sharp because D major is two sharps. And I see here, I see every F in here is sharp, and I don't see any Cs, so don't have to worry about them. But I'm sure if there were C's in here, they would be C sharps.
So let's take this. I'm going to kind of do both hands at the same time because most of the time it's one hand or the other playing. Four lines long, treble and bass clef. We know we're in the key of D major. We've established that, so all the Fs are sharped. Three, four time signature, and we're coming in on a pickup beat. We're coming in on beat three. So the first two beats of that measure are at the bottom. And then this is B3. We have quarter notes, eighth notes, half notes. We can handle all that, I hope. I'm going to kind of take both hands at the same time, because most of the time it's one hand or the other. At the beginning, we're in the D pin of scale. We figure we're going to use the notes in this position. And it's three. Three and one and two and. And two. Accidentals. It applies from that point on to the rest of the measure. That's why in measure three, both of those Fs are sharped because the first it applies to the rest of the measure. So all the three Fs, they're all sharp. And then go on measure five. One. See, that's an F chord. It's just a broken D chord, isn't it? Then you have a G and an A in the left hand. And then the D and an A in their left hand. Back to the G and A. You do that some more. Okay, that's basically the piece. So you work out the notes and the rhythms, and I connect everything at first. And then once I'm comfortable with the notes and the rhythms, then I'll add in the articulation. We have accents and staccatos. Accents, just play them a little louder. I'm don't. And the, there's staccato also, so it's just make sure your wrist is flexible here. Connect. Just playing these quarter notes a little louder. Lift, measure four, lift up. This is a new phrase. Now, measure six. We have, and that comes up on B3. That comes up when you play the A at the same time. So, because you stick out, but that stays down. Here, and then it comes up. There. Don't lift them at the same time. No. Keep that left hand down a full two counts. the articulation. I don't do the accents very well, but you give it a little accent, a little extra. Mm. Then the dynamics, forte at the beginning, it's all melody. So whatever you think loud is, that makes the accent and notes very loud. See, that's why it, I, uh, in my mind, this really should be moderately loud at the beginning. Take it down a notch. That way the accent and notes are just loud. I don't think this needs to be very loud right there. It's just too loud. So, so in my mind, I'd bring it down moderately loud. And measure four going on, you're soft. And these half notes are very soft in the left hand. Moderately loud. So forth. And then measure 12 going on, it's soft again. The left hand is very soft. Yeah. We want to hear the melody in the right hand. When you're sort of comfortable with that, then we think about the speed. This is a dance, but it's not a fast dance. It's sort of a proud dance. So let's feel it. It's one way of playing it. You can play it different. It's just you make it yours. You get into it, you read the music, and how do you feel it? At the bottom of the page, they're asking you about the pen of scale, the tonic, and the dominant. Remember, the tonic is the first step, so in a D, the tonic is the first one. 
B and the D is the tonic note, and the dominant is the fifth one, which is the top note. That's the dominant in the key of D. It's an A. So a chord bell on that step would be that tonic chord or dominant chord or whatever it is. All right. Let's play this together very slowly and double check that you have the right notes and rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'll try and do the accents, and, but let's see. I'll give us two counts because we come in on beat three. Ready and go. And one and. 